Welcome to our uh, shop math class, and we're going to be learning about measurement systems. In this case, it's going to be linear measurement systems. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a look at some of our linear measurement systems that uh, we've talked about in previous classes, and I've got videos on. And then we are going to dive into um, the caliper in some detail. I've got a couple of my calipers here. Um, grabbed them up out of my toolbox this morning. And, uh, and then we're going to talk in theory about uh, micrometers. So let's, let's get started. First of all, we're going to go and look at my desk. Sitting on my desk is a whole bunch of measurement devices, including a stapler. We're going to remove the stapler. OK, so here on my desk, I've sort of arranged a variety of measurement devices that you may not run into in real life. Now, those of you who do sewing, and I do lots of sewing, I sewed my own masks for the COVID crisis. I started sewing them in February as soon as it was, as it was obvious that masks were helping reduce transmission rates in different parts of the world. Um, this is a kind of a tape measure. It is a cloth tape. It is used primarily in sewing. It has used, been used by tailors for literally hundreds of years. And uh, it comes in inches and centimeters. The, uh, the smallest measurement on it is an eighth of an inch and uh, in millimeters on the other side of the tape. This is a great tape because it allows me to measure around curves. This is a really awesome tape because it lets me measure around curves. And on the inches side, it's got giant letters so that I can um, pull this around and immediately spot where I am in the, uh, on this. So 11 inches is super obvious. So if you have to measure around a waistline, and we're not going to talk about where mine at is these days, you can wrap this around the waist and get an easy circumference of my chubby personage. Also, you can measure around odd shaped objects like this little pencil sharpener. So how would I do this measurement? So we're going to demonstrate that here. You wrap it around, you overlap, all right? And then you spot where the lower tape edge meets the measurement on the upper tape. In this case, it's actually showing in reverse to you guys. It's showing nine inches plus one measurement, which is nine and an eighth of an inch. So I know that this odd shaped object has got a, uh, not a circumference because it's not a circle, but a outer perimeter distance of nine and one eighth of an inch. So that is why you use a flexible uh, tape measure. Now this doesn't have the capability of a modern tape measure, steel tape measure to extend out and go long distances to measure across gaps. It's just, a cloth tape, but it is great for doing any sort of measurement of people, odd objects, and around curves. I actually like to keep one of those in my kit even when I'm doing um, industrial work because it's useful for measuring around and getting an accurate circumference within an eighth of an inch. Um, this is another example of a tape measure. This is a distance tape measure. In this case, this is a 100-foot Stanley long tape. It's designed to measure uh, distances across floors, um, outside from corner to corner in a foundation. Um, these, this style, this is actually a smaller one of this style. This style can come up to uh, 300 feet or more in a giant school. And this tape measure, has usually got some sort of crank mechanism to, to uh, crank it back in. It doesn't spring uh, return. It usually has um, inch markings and with an accuracy of about an eighth of an inch maximum. And it usually has foot markings highlighted in a different color. It does not necessarily include uh, 16 inch centers, which are common for, um, 
for doing stud walls. 16 inch centers is what you would have for the two by fours in a stud wall at center to center. It also doesn't include some of the little like diamond marks that you would see for 19 inch centers in stud walls that you would find on modern tape measures. It is also no good for extending across distances. It doesn't have any uh, ability to maintain a gap. The key thing about this tape measure that makes it good outdoor for long distances is it's got a hook that can fold down. So if you are measuring, you put that hook over your edge and from that outside edge, in this case, say from the far end of this ruler, you can measure and pull this tape. You see, you hook that there and you pull it across. And so this plastic ruler, the outer flange is actually um, 12 and um, 5 eighths of an inch long. If you can look sight down, right down. The idea is you need your eyeball 90 degrees from the surface of the tape. So as you sight down, you want to be able to sight down exactly at 90 degrees so that you know what the actual length is. So this is an example of a tape measure that's designed for distances. It's got a hook in it that you can hook over the edge of pieces of wood or a nail or whatever you need. It's great for foundation work. This is an example of a ruler, I think I showed this to you already, that's used by architects and drafters. It's got a number of different measurement systems as you rotate this. So it's got three sides and each side has two measurement systems on it. So as you do your drafting, it gives you different scales right here on your ruler. This is kind of old school. You're not gonna see this very often anymore. Guess what? Because most drafting is done in the computer, which does all your scaling for you. All right, these are all very useful tools. This is actually just a standard ruler. I like to use this kind of ruler best when I'm doing any kind of drawing work on by hand because it's got this little rail here in the middle that I can grab and move around my ruler easily and I don't have to scrabble and try to pick it up. I can move it easy. It's clear so I can see uh, the, the lines underneath the ruler so I know I'm precisely getting things where I need to get. And so this is my great, this is a highly used, somewhat damaged ruler that I've used many, many times for doing quick sketches. Now even my quick sketches, I try to keep straight lines, so that's why I use a ruler. And this particular ruler's got centimeters on one side and inches on the other. So those are all very important rulers. Now obviously you guys know about um, yardsticks, at least I would hope you, you know about yardsticks, and you know about uh, standard rulers. So let's talk about steel rolls. Um, I prefer, when I'm in the shop, keeping with me almost at all times a small steel rule. Now I do have larger ones. I've got a 12 inch, I've got a, a 16, I've got an 18 inch, and I have a 36 inch steel roll I use occasionally. But the one that stays on me all the time is this little guy here, which is a six inch steel rule. And that lets me check parts quickly. I can check diameter of screws to know what kind of screw it is. I can check the length. I can check widths. I can check angles. This really is the steel rule of choice for me. I'm not going to go into how to use it. That's in the video. If you have questions, ask me.